This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii. And you might be waiting for me to say code green, but I am not in my code green capacity today. I am in my musketeer capacity, as in Elon Musk. This is a special guest appearance, no extra charge for you. My guest is a fellow musketeer and entrepreneur, Alan Marchand. Welcome to the show, Alan. Hello, thank you for having I me. I hope that, uh, yeah, we have a whole lot of fun with this. The title of the program is Knocking Moore's Law Off Its Moorings. What in the world is that? Moore's Law, as you probably know, was founded by Gordon Moore, who was a professor, I believe, at University of Pennsylvania, and he was way, way early in the computer game when they were just developing transistors. And he watched the evolution of the transistors, and he said, you know what? Every two years, the size of these devices is going to shrink by half, and its capacity is going to double. And that was back approximately 1972, I think it was. And they recently, a couple of years ago, had a celebration for Dr. Moore, oh, who since went on to uh, found a little company called uh, Intel. And they celebrated him. He's now in his mid-80s. And they said, Dr. Moore, your prediction was pretty well on target. And this might be a huge exaggeration, but somebody speculated that back in 72, the Volkswagen bug was all the, the rage. And if the Volkswagen bug had gone through the same metamorphosis as have the computers and other electronic devices, it could, I think it's go 200,000 miles an hour, get 2 million miles to the gallon, and cost seven cents. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's, that's hyperbole, but that's the nature of Moore's Law. But the computer industry has been the, the godchild of Moore's Law until Elon Musk comes along, and he's saying basically everything is progressing too slowly, and Ellen and I are going to be discussing his myriad projects and everything points to the fact that he's leap, trying to leapfrog beyond Moore's Law almost. So why don't we uh, start with, with you, Ellen. What, uh, what do you have for us uh, first? What, what, which of his projects would you like to talk about? Well, uh, I'm an Elon Musk fan. Uh, really, that's what I like. Uh, and so what I wanted to talk about is some of the different companies Elon Musk has uh, currently working on. I may have missed some, but I don't think I've you know, missed I, too many. I, I have a little list, so if, I think if you miss something, I, I can right. jump in and yeah. So if we can move on to the second slide. Um, the Elon Musk has, uh, of course, the CEO of Tesla, and he uh, just did a major presentation, among many, but recently about the Tesla Roadster, and this is coming out in 2020. And the amazing thing here is that it's got a 200 kilowatt battery, 600 mile range uh, is all electric and it does 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. And, and what can a typical racing car do in 0 to 60? Uh, probably like a 1 point, uh, 2 point 2.1, 2 mm -hmm. point 2.4 mm -hmm. and so the 1.9 is um, would be a world record mm -hmm. for that. That has to be proven. But the interesting thing is that anybody that has the money to spend on an exotic car doesn't have to buy a V12 engine that sucks gas and mm -hmm. needs to be tuned all the time, they can now buy an electric car. Mm -hmm. So just in that one thing alone, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. And for him, he stated that it was, uh, uh, he wanted to show the world that this was possible mm -hmm. in an exotic car. Yeah. And then he sets the price point at 200,000 or 250,000, which by supercar standards is bottom, bottom rung. Mm -hmm. um, Again, yeah, I would never buy one, but it's an interesting example of his, his yeah. in-your-face attitude mm -hmm. towards current thinking. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people who could afford a quarter million for a car. Yeah. I mean, yeah. tens of thousands of them. Right. Yeah. 
So if we go to the next slide, uh, the more interesting thing to me is that recently uh, introduced or unveiled a Tesla Semi. And what's interesting thing about that is uh, the Tesla Semi uh, is... We need the next slide. Please. Next slide, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the Tesla Semi is a what they call a Class 8 truck, which is the biggest semi as you would see on the road today. Mm -hmm. Designed to carry uh, 80,000 pounds in the trailer, like most trucks can. No one thought this was really possible. Mm -hmm. He repurposed four separate Model 3 engines at the, each of the back wheels. And if you look at this slide, it talks about the drag coefficient of this Tesla Semi at 0.36 and he compares it to the best car that's out there right now at 0.38. Now, if you think about a semi running down the road, that's mm -hmm, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, if we go to the next slide, he, they actually consulted with a lot of um, semi companies or companies that use semis and asked them what would they like to see in the design of a semi. So Tesla, instead of just creating the regular interior of a truck, put the driver front and center inside the cab of the truck. They also took the windshield because it turns out the windshield is a big problem for trucks if they get broken, the truck's down, can't move. They made the windshield bulletproof. So the, the windshield should never break. Um, with the electric motor uh, and the batteries, the, bat the trucks right now are slated to have a three and 500 mile range depending on configuration. Hmm. with a guaranteed 30-minute charge time at what they call a super or mega charger, um, which nobody's seen the specs on, but the early indications are that would be uh, something over a megawatt of energy transfer at, at a point. So if we could go to the next slide yeah. for the Tesla Semi. This brings up, it's a little bit... Um, not the best resolution, but basically zero to 60 in 20 seconds. That's a fully loaded 80,000 pound rig. Uh, 65 miles an hour at a 5% grade mm -hmm. with a full load. And then because of its four independent motors at the back wheels, the braking, the mm -hmm. tip over, and the safety factor plus mm -hmm. auto driving are tremendous. So right now there's over 4,000 deaths a year based on semi-accidents. Hmm. This should help with that. Yeah. So yeah, um, you, you see these pictures sometimes of a great big semi overturned on a bridge or right. whatever and spilling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this semi would essentially doesn't have the front wheel drive is being driven, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily need it in my opinion because you have each of the four wheels in the back individually torque steering. That is. Thoroughly, thoroughly incredible. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and that's the first truck that they came out of the gate with, uh, which is if you look at some of the other electric trucks, there's a, a lot of efforts going on. Mm -hmm. But Mercedes, for example, has a single axle. I think it's a class six or class eight, uh, seven, but main basically for like a harbor area. Mm -hmm. and very, very short run. But only a hundred mile range. Mm -hmm. So for Tesla to come out with a semi, Mm -hmm. The first truck they ever produced at either three or five hundred mile range is stupendous, in my my opinion. And are there these things actually out on the road now? You... Twenty twenty is a delivery date, mm -hmm. maybe twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um, pre orders right now are going more than they expected. Mm. UPS are, uh, bought one hundred and twenty five. Oh my Walmart goodness! Walmart bought fifty. Oh my um, goodness! You, uh, let's see the Canadian. There's another Canadian grocery t uh, team that uh, are concerned that bought 20 or 25. So the orders, the pre-orders are coming in for the truck. So that people are incredible. believing it's going to be big. Yeah, yeah. Wh which shows how much credibility Musk has. Right, yeah. right. And it's really unproven technology. Yeah. And it could yeah, fall right. on its face, but it's exciting mm -hmm. that he's trying to make this happen. And yeah. again, each semi that's taken off the road on an annual basis is a huge... Um, positive factor from a lack of diesel fumes mm -hmm, and consumption mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. out annually on a 100,000 mile yeah.
per year truck. And every year that goes by, more and more of our electricity is clean electricity produced either by wind or, or solar. Right, that's, yeah. that's the long-term yeah. goal. Uh, there's still a lot of coal production in the mainland mm -hmm. United States, unfortunately. Over 200 coal plants have closed already. Right. Yeah. So Which we're, we're getting there. But, brings us yeah. to our next slide of mm -hmm. Tesla Energy. And Tesla Energy is exciting because uh, this is a picture of a recently installed 100 megawatt um, in conjunction with a wind farm in Australia. You may have read something about this. But just uh, Elon Musk took a challenge from one of the Australian folks that had um, a desire for this to happen, and he said, I can put it in place in 100 days. <laughs> so they put it in place in 100 days, and already it's been uh, smoothing out the electrical mm -hmm. grid and in mm -hmm. storing power from the wind farm. And its reaction time, if it needs to provide power to the uh, the energy has been proven already at uh, six tenths of a six milliseconds. So it comes online in six mm -hmm. milliseconds faster than they can turn a coal fired uh, or gas fired uh, peaker plant up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And a yeah, li little background there. Uh, here in Hawaii, we're looking at more and more solar, more and more wind. In fact, we have we have so much PV photovoltaics on our roofs right now that at in the middle of a sunny day we are producing more electricity than the utility can accommodate. Right. It can throttle back its power plants only so much. If it throttles back any more, they'll stall. So they go as low as they can go, and still the electrical production goes lower than that. So so it's wasted. Yeah. So what is the solution to have storage batteries just like that? to suck up all that middle of the day energy, and then we have a peak in the evening, and you use that stored up energy to what's called shave the peak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kauai is doing that even as we speak, and incidentally, Kauai has, I believe it's 20 megawatts of the Tesla batteries over there, and they, they have only 65,000 people on the whole island. So mm -hmm. they're getting close to being a clean, energy island, thanks partially to, to Tesla for exactly what, what you're describing here. Yeah, 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 and that example just happened in uh, Australia where they actually absorbed energy mm -hmm. and they were paid money because it's more yeah. as, as important to absorb energy sometimes as it is to give energy yeah, into the yeah. network. Mm -hmm. Now if we go to the next slide. Um, uh, you know what, we're going, ah, not enough time, we need to take a break right now. Howard Wig. Think Tech Hawaii with Ellen Marchand, back in a moment. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw we do it. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Greetings again, Howard Wig, Musketeer number two. I'm here with Ellen Marchand, and we are talking about the most fascinating man in the world, Elon Musk. I was going to say Elon Tesla. <laughs> Elon Musk. And why don't we jump back into those storage, uh, that storage slide, because this is so, so crucial. Yeah. Yeah, if we could go to the next slide after that, that's the commercial battery pack. Each one of those three that you see on the left represents 100 kilowatts of storage. Mm -hmm. So made for commercial applications. Now this is the Powerwall 2 made for, say, more of a residential uh, solution. And it's right around 15 kilowatts. Price point would be about $6,200 inverter and mm -hmm. battery. Mm -hmm. And they include the birder inverter built into that package, so it's a very slimline package. And could you go off-grid, theoretically, a typical Yes, home? you can yeah. sequence up mm -hmm. to 10 of those. Ooh. So mm -hmm. depending on your house needs, 
you can actually do uh, a scalable off-grid mm -hmm. solution. Uh, now let's go to the next slide. Tesla also has some roof shingles, uh, which mm -hmm. they're producing. These are probably only going to be seen on high-end homes, but you could go to their website right now, tesla.com, click in the energy section, actually look at what a contracted rate would be for your mm -hmm. roof. And then your roof would be this aesthetically pleasing solar panel, and but with no solar panels on top. And you would get uh, tax credits for this also. You would. Now, yeah. if you go to the next slide, uh, this is a more conventional solar panel that uh, they are worked with in conjunction with Panasonic. And so that's more what you would normally see on top of a roof. And they mm -hmm. put a nice border around the sides to kind of make it look more aesthetically pleasing. And I know the shingles are shatterproof. I don't know if this is shatterproof also. Yeah, the shingles yeah. are, and mm -hmm. that I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question about that. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to the next slide, we'll go from the Tesla Energy, Tesla.com, to Elon's uh, Neuralace company. Now, this I'm not familiar with. Now, this is interesting yeah. because Neuralace was conceptualized or brought out in a science fiction. <laughs> Basically, it's an injectable some sort of uh, synthetic material that goes into the human brain that interacts with your neurons and allows you to connect with the internet. Now, the reason why uh, <laughs> Elon Musk has uh, developed a company for mm -hmm. this in particular is to um, compete with machines in the future. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the next slide, he actually has a company called uh, OpenAI. Now, the reason why he has formed OpenAI, or Open Artificial Intelligence, is he and, and Sam Altman see a danger in uncontrolled development of artificial mm -hmm, intelligence. Mm -hmm. Uncontrolled being for military, for economic gain, for advantage, right? Yeah, and, and so... And overwhelming power of some sort. I exactly, and that, there's yeah. a concept called yeah. friendly AI. But mm -hmm. friendly AI would be human controlled with reason, right? Mm -hmm. And But there's a lot of uncontrolled development of going on of AI in competition, like the Chinese, mm -hmm. the US, the Russians, et cetera, mm -hmm. for advantage, right? And so he wants to have open AI out there for development of friendly AI. There's a lot of people that don't talk about this and don't think about this. And if you go to the next slide, mm -hmm. One of the AI books that Elon uh, recommends that I'm currently reading, I really enjoy, is uh, Artificial Intelligence and the End of the Human Era, Our Final Invention by James Barrett. It summarizes entirely the AI development, the AI actors, the different types of AI, mm -hmm. and then what the potential future could look like. So I encourage anybody to, to read it because mm -hmm. right now, anybody I talk to about AI there doesn't seem to be a, an understanding of what's happening or an understanding of what the implications are. Mm -hmm. But essentially, if you have a super intelligent, artificial intelligent being, they would be a thousand or more times uh, smarter than you and I. And so mm -hmm. we would become the dog and they would become the master, mm -hmm. potentially, uh, if it's an uncontrolled yeah. AI solution. So going on to the next slide, uh, one of an, uh, the other companies that Elon uh, theorized is the Boring Company. Mm -hmm. And he, it's not boring at all. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, <laughs> but interestingly enough, he was in LA traffic and he's mm -hmm. decided uh, <laughs> that he was going to develop a Boring Company. Mm -hmm. He theorized that he could make 14 uh, foot diameter tunnels, a new type of tunnel machine, improvement on the current tunneling technology by a factor of 10 or more. And the reason why he theorized this is that he said you could make a series of 3D tunnels at multiple levels in any city. And then you could put them, you could put cars or transportation type devices like mm -hmm. for, for multiple people on an electric skate car and then skate them around in these tunnels that are say about 124 miles an hour, all mm -hmm. electric, no pollution. And then they come up and down via an elevator system wherever they need to land. Now, people thought this was really a funny, stupid idea, mm -hmm. but then he went and bought a used tunneling machine. Uh -huh. Then he went to the SpaceX parking lot and started <laughs> digging a hole. Mm -hmm. Then he inserted the tunnel machine and started digging. Now he's been approved by the city of Hawthorne for a two-mile tunnel, and now, which he's currently building, and he has mm -hmm. pictures if you research, 
Then, now he's going to the next level, which is he's petitioning the city of Los Angeles for like a 14-mile tunnel, up mm -hmm. the 405. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the next slide. <laughs> there, you know, we could spend a whole program on any one of these. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we go to the Hyperloop. Uh, this is a theorized, uh, uh, like a vacuum tube uh, pod. Mm -hmm. And the pod is, just, that's a test pod right now, so the vacuum tube would be bigger. But right now, they're going through a series of competitions to prove out the technology with uh, a series of university teams. And he opened up the competition to anybody internationally. Mm -hmm. And they all have been competing multiple times, including there's a test track down at SpaceX. So the concept here is you could have up to, up to 700 miles per hour of travel <laughs> from point to point. And Elon said the distance that's likely, the best distance would be about 1,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And so you can move. Um, commercial or um, regular people. Do well, that he's, he's looking at uh, boring also from D.C. to uh, New York City. Yeah, 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 they have some boring efforts in right now, mm -hmm. so it's really exciting. Uh, going on to the next slide, we have Space Exploration Corporation, uh, commonly known as SpaceX. Uh, these are two of the current rockets. The one on the left is the Falcon 9, has nine engines, uh, is set the lowest price uh, of any car uh, rocket in the the world right now, even cheaper than the Chinese. Mm -hmm. They have single-handedly brought back a massive amount of space launch um, capability to the U.S. that wasn't there before. And then this year, I think they're forecasting about 25 to 28 launches. And I think, since it, partially since it's made out of recycled material, isn't he delivering goods up to the satellites for one-fourth the estimated net NASA cost? Oh yeah, I think yeah. that uh, probably uh, UAL, our United Launch Alliance, which which launches the Atlas V, mm -hmm. was right around the 160 range, mm -hmm. maybe more. Um, now a lot of those are burden costs, depending on what NASA says the contractor has to provide. But still, the United Launch Alliance can't get it down that low. Mm -hmm. So they're saving NASA a lot of money. They're also saving the military a lot of money. And, the, and therefore saving us taxpayers a lot of money. Right. Yeah. The rocket on the right-hand side is mm -hmm. the Falcon Heavy. That's going to be coming in January of 2018. Should be launching from Cape, Canav Cape Canaveral. It has gone vertical on the launch pad currently, and it has 27 inches, 27 engines, excuse me. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, uh, this is an example of the Falcon 9 <laughs> landing. Now this is the first stage that goes up. The second mm -hmm. stage with the payload, say a satellite, goes up from there. Every other space company has thrown away that, that, mm -hmm. that first stage and let it burn up in the atmosphere. Elon Musk said in order to have a reusable craft, in order to save money, we have to make it reusable. So this is an actual landing shot of a Falcon 9 first stage landing, um, which is just amazing. No government's done that, mm -hmm. not the Chinese, mm -hmm. not the Russians, not the US. Now, <laughs> SpaceX works hand in hand with uh, NASA. So again and again, mm -hmm. Elon continues to credit NASA because mm -hmm. it was the space uh, information sharing acts that NASA had actually during mm -hmm. Bush Jr.'s administration, mm -hmm. believe it or not. But they said, we have all this technology on the shelf. We aren't getting it out there. We aren't mm -hmm. commercializing it. So if we have a technology sharing agreement with SpaceX, mm -hmm. with Blue Origin, with whoever wants to do it, ATK, uh, then we're going to get that technology out. These companies are going to iterate and change and, and improve that technology. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have an agreement that they can't sell the technology that they create to, uh, say, a foreign power that's an adversary of the United mm -hmm. States. So, well, wow. talk, talk about saving the taxpayers money. I mean, we spent all of that development, those billions of dollars, and now we're putting it to use. Right, right. Yeah. And this is mm -hmm. basically like, uh, I could go on and on. So mm -hmm. let's go to the next slide. <laughs> um, that is, I think, the Falcon 9. That's the Falcon Heavy that's currently on the launch pad right now. And that's slated for a test firing maybe this Friday. And if it goes off, it'll be the largest and the most powerful rocket in the world when it, when it goes up. Uh, so let's know. go to the next slide. Yeah. This is really exciting. Mm -hmm. This is what they call the SpaceX BFR. And it mm -hmm. stands for... Oh, oh we, we just ran out of slides. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, 
The next slide uh, would have been the SpaceX VFR rocket, mm -hmm. and that's the next iteration of all these rockets. And it stands for Big Frigging Rocket, literally. <laughs> um, be that was putting it politely. Now that <laughs> is a 12 meter across, 42 engine Mars rocket. 12, 12, 12 meters yes. is yeah. 38 feet approximately. Right. With 42 engines. With mm. a payload capacity of a spaceship on top. Now mm. the spaceship on top is a second stage. But what he's going to do is he's going to sunset the Falcon Heavy and the Falcon 9 at some point in the future and have all customers going on the BFR. And the reason for the BFR is that it's completely 100% reusable. The first mm. stage is going to come back and land vertically. The second stage is going to come back and land vertically. Now the second stage is a phenomenal spaceship. It's made to carry up to 200 people to Mars. To Mars. And land <laughs> on its own power. <laughs> this is unbelievable, I know. Mm -hmm. But if you go to SpaceX.com, which I encourage anybody to do that's excited about this, um, you're going to see it. And uh, it's just stupendous. I, I can't say more. If you saw the other slide, uh, Elon's SpaceX company has as a goal to put a million people on Mars. <laughs> and you say, well, why would they do that? Why would anybody want to go mm -hmm. to Mars? Elon Musk, again, pushing the technology in all these different areas. Mm -hmm. His theory behind the Mars effort, and he said it himself, he said, Human humanity has to create the forcing function to make the change. And he, those aren't his exact words, mm -hmm. but that's what he said, which is, if we get to this first planet, then we can think <laughs> about the second planet. My goodness. Until we get to the first planet, we're stuck back on Earth. We could have an extinction event. We could have a war. We could have a plague. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. the fact that is he wants a forcing, a forcing function, so he's pushing every effort he can to get us to have this uh, base on on um, Mars. And the other thing they're talking about now because of more immediate political reasons is they might do something on the moon. With mm -hmm. this BFR spaceship, they could actually take that second stage spacecraft, mm -hmm. go to the moon, mm -hmm. after refueling in orbit with a full load of fuel from another BFR second stage spacecraft that's just a fuel carrier. They could take that second stage and go directly to the moon, land vertically, carry enough cargo and supplies for a mission to occur on the first landing. And the moon would just be a cakewalk, I mean, compared oh, to, yeah. I think so. And um, on that very, very cheery note, I mean, we're just getting warmed up, but the time has come to say fond to do. This is Howard Wig, one of the two musketeers, the other musketeer being Alan Marchand, musketeer <laughs> and entrepreneur. So thank you very much. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Thank you for your time.